My name is Stefan. I'm a technical lead working at an Austrian-based company, Solvion, and I'm mainly uh, responsible for all, I call it conversational AI parts within our company. Therefore, I'm an AI MVP dealing with the bot framework and things. Um, if any one of you has questions, please feel free to contact me or use the bit.ly uh, link down here where we meet Tommy Gerles, uh, Rick von Rostelt and uh, Api Anshot have made some some videos on that topic as, as, as well as other topics as well to, to get more into the details. So before we start into actual demos, I want to give you a quick, quick overview of what the conversational AI platform is actually because it's quite a quite a tremendous uh, platform um, Microsoft has built out there, starting with uh, open source frameworks for actually building conversational uh, apps, conversational AI apps with the bot framework. Um, there are a lot of SDKs out there for C Sharp, JavaScript, Python, and Java you can use uh, to actually um, write code and build bots. On top of that, um, they have what they call or what we call the managed bot service. So a bot hosting platform in Azure uh, offers you the possibility to actually deploy your bot to um, the Azure resources and connect your bot to the various channels without actually managing the connections between those channels yourself. That's done by Microsoft, so you can actually build your bot, focus on the, the building part, development part, and then just um, pick and choose which channels should be uh, offered within your bot um, solution. The, so. On top of that, um, what what you actually would need to build a really sophisticated bot um, are pre-trained AI services, meaning cognitive services offering you intelligence as a service. Could be in some kind of uh, vision category like computer vision, image detection, um, or face recognition. Could be in terms of speech and language, meaning language understanding, speaker recognition, speech to text, and so on and so forth. And those are actually the services which make your bot intelligent because a bot itself built with the bot framework is nothing more than a regular uh, web app you built. Uh, and then um, if you're quite new to the topic, there are a lot of templates and solution accelerators out there. So you don't need to start from scratch. You can use the solution accelerators. Um, you can download them uh, on the GitHub pages uh, and you pretty much have a bot up and running within a couple of minutes. Um, we don't need to actually write code, just look on the, behind the curtains how, how Microsoft builds um, sophisticated bots themselves. Um, in terms of the bot framework itself, as we're speaking today of the bot framework composer, which is one part of the Microsoft bot framework, um, we, we have a lot of um, sample repos out there. There are a lot of CLI tools out there for doing automation and, and stuff. Um, you got your own emulator you can use to actually build and debug bots locally. Um, so without the need to actually building your bot and then deploying it first before you can test it, you can do that locally. Um, and there are a lot of other um, controls out there for implementing web chat and stuff or in implementing it into SharePoint pages or what have you. Coming through the uh, implementation side of things, uh, you can build your bot actually once and then connect it to a wide range of channels, meaning you can connect it to Teams, you can connect it to um, email, you can connect it to uh, uh, SMS, meaning text messaging bot, but you can also make use of the third party channels like Facebook Messenger, like Slack, uh, and so on and so forth. And the cool thing here is really, you build the bot once and then deploy it to whichever channel you want to have it uh, deployed to without actually needing to build uh, multiple bots for the multiple channels. Of course, here and there, there are differences in the channels. Some support, let's say, uh, adaptive cards while some don't. Some support speech while some don't and so on and so forth, um, which you need to think about before you actually connect it to the various channels. But in general, you could say you built the stuff once, you develop it once, and then you can run it almost everywhere. And for, for the topic of today, the Microsoft Bot Framework Composer, um, this is quite a new tool you can make use of to build a bot. Uh, and as you can see uh, on the slide here, it's basically a graphical user interface for building a bot. So you don't need to actually write the code yourself. You just use the, the Composer um, to, to actually build the bot, to um, design the dialogues, uh, design the bot's behavior, 
without the need of writing code because Composer in the back end writes the code for you. Um, and, and so this is pretty much uh, a tool not only built for developers, but also built for, let's say, power users or business users um, to actually uh, get get the bot building or bot development um, phase um, much quicker and, and, and easier, of course, where you can actually start in Composer and then hand it off to, let's say, the development team to make some more or sophisticated uh, actions in there or tweak the bot here and there, which you can't do with Composer uh, out of the box. So um, the whole bot development lifecycle um, gets much more easier with the introduction of Composer. And Composer mainly consists of, of various pieces. Of course, first of all, the visual editor, um, where you can just design the bot's behavior. You can design dialogues and stuff like that. But also what you get with Composer is the ability to handle all the things happening around your bot right within that tool as well. So you can manage your language understanding models right within Composer. You don't need to actually switch to another portal, which in the past was the uh, Lewis portal to actually scaffold your, uh, let's say, language understanding model and then go back to Visual Studio Code or Visual Studio to implement it into your bot. You can do it right within Composer. Um, the same is true for the opposite, meaning language generation. Um, this is quite a new topic in the bot uh, side of things where you can actually make use of, of uh, much more sophisticated, um, let's say, dialogue concepts where you could um, implement language generation models to make the bot more or make the bot behave more personal. Um, for instance, if, if someone um, greets the, the bot, the bot should greet back. But depending on the time of the day, the bot will greet either with good morning, good afternoon, or good evening uh, to make the whole conversation much more personal um, and much more user-friendly in a way uh, instead of just saying hi each and every time the user greets the bot uh, at a very simple um, scenario. And all of those concepts are basically wrapped up in, in what, what's called adaptive dialogues. So meaning in the past, you would need to write your dialogues using either C Sharp or JavaScript or TypeScript or whatever. Um, and nowadays, you with the adaptive dialogues concept, you just write JSON. So dialogues are nothing more than JSON representatives, which include all of that stuff, meaning language understanding parts, the language generation parts, and the triggers and actions you will have in your dialogues. And that, that makes it much more flexible. So you could basically uh, go ahead use the composer to just uh, model out your dialogues and then mm -hmm. hand them over to the developers for implementing them. Uh, no matter if they're using C Sharp uh, today and tomorrow they're mm -hmm. writing a JavaScript uh, bot, they can actually uh, make use of the adaptive dialogues in either case. So um, the whole um, bot framework and, and bot development um, kind of art architecture is more, more holistic in, in that approach. But enough for slides, let's jump into a demo. What I have here is the bot framework composer. Uh, as I have my slideshow still on, you can't see it, but it's basically a, an Electron app you can install on your machine. Um, you can get it from, from the GitHub repo, or if you want to, uh, you can also download uh, the source and build the, the composer tool by yourself if you want to tweak it, if you want to customize it, or if you want to extend it. Um, and it, within here, um, kind of oriented to what Power Virtual Agent does and kind of a um, bit of the Power Automate uh, UI uh, where you can actually make use of that visual editor to design um, your bot's behavior. So if you want to build a new bot, um, of course, you can st start from scratch. If you know what you're doing, you can basically get your, get your empty bot up and running and scaffold the whole dialogues by yourself. But the cool thing here is you have a lot of uh, working samples in here, which you can use to actually see what's possible with the composer tool, what you can do with, with it and what you, can, what you can't do with it um, to get a, let's say, starting point um, to, to take it further down the road. So um, what I actually want to wanna demo today is a simple um, bot capable of answering questions which are stored in a Q&A maker knowledge base, uh, as well as uh, implementing some uh, language understanding 
um, parts within it. So I, I'll go ahead with the Q&A Maker and Lewis um, template, and I'll give it a name. I hope I don't have Chuck Norris already in my composer folder. Um, and there you go. Right now, um, what you get is a basically working bot with some, uh, some uh, triggers implemented. So on the left hand side, you have your dialogues and within the dialogues, you have your triggers. Triggers means each and every time the bot detects a language understanding intent, it will trigger that specific part within the, within the dialogue. Meaning if a user enters the conversation, there's a conversation update activity happening, telling the bot, hey, someone has entered the conversation, a member has added to the, was added to the conversation, and you would need to do the following, greet the user, send a response, welcome, you can type help to learn more. Um, there's another trigger for help out of the box. So if a user types in help, or I need help, or please help, those kind of intents are basically, um, stored within your language understanding model and each and every time the language understanding model uh, detects the the help intent uh, the bot will actually send a response to um, help the user get going with with the within the conversation um, and within the q a maker and lewis sample if the intent is unknown meaning neither the help intent has been triggered or the by surface help uh, intent has been triggered it will look up the uh, message from the user in, in the Q&A maker knowledge base, see if an answer can be found in there or not. Um, and if, if so, the answer will be sent back to the user. And if not, um, a, a no match um, message will be sent back to the user. So if I'm now gonna go ahead and just update the app settings or the what's called in the bot framework, the bot settings, I need to propose my at least Q&A maker knowledge base ID so the bot will actually know where to look up the questions if the intent has not, be, has not been detected. So I'll go ahead and insert my knowledge base details in there. And then if I'm going to go ahead and just click start bot, the composer will prompt me to implement my Louis primary key so it can build up the language understanding model for me. Um, and after some seconds, the bot will be ready to use. So in the background, it will spin up the, the .NET Core um, application for me. And if the bot has been um, up and running, I can immediately test the bot right within or right from my composer tool. Now I have to test an emulator button up here. So what it actually will do is it will bring up the bot framework emulator uh, I mentioned earlier, where I can test and debug my bot locally. So if I'm not going to go ahead and open the emulator, it will greet me. And now I can do um, things like, I don't know what's in my knowledge base, um, but I'm pretty sure there's something about the bot framework in there. I can go ahead and ask the bot and the bot will look up the question in my knowledge base, not yet, because uh, unfortunately this seems to be the help intent triggered. So in here I can see help intent was triggered um, and it will bring back the answer from my help trigger. Um, but that's not sophisticated at all. Um, but what, what we can do in here is define a new trigger and I want to define a new trigger for, let's say, um, the, I want the bot to tell me a joke. So I have my trigger phrases in here, tell me a joke, are you funny, do you know a joke, please tell a joke, and so on and so forth. This goes right into my language understanding model. And what I can do right here um, is uh, I can alter the bot's behavior or the dialogue's behavior. So I can send a response if I want to hard code uh, a joke. I can ask back a question. Um, saying I want to have a text input, number input, confirmation, whatever, um, what have you. Um, but what I can also do is send an HTTP request right from me, right from within here. So there is this very um, cool Chuck Norris API, which I can uh, query, and um, I can store the result 
in a variable. So pretty easy. HTTP request get, just insert the URL in there and just tell the um, dialog which property to fill um, at the end of the day. And then I can just, at a very simple um, stage, I can send the response I get right from within here. So I can uh, refer to dialog to choke response is the actual response I'm, I'm getting from the API and the value is within uh, content.value. If I restart the bot now, and now it's building up the language understanding model again because I've added a new intent in there and I've added a new trigger in there. In there. Um, but if it's done build, building and publishing, I can restart my conversation and say, um, tell me a joke, for instance. And right now it should hit the Chuck Norris API and give me back a joke. And within here we see it hits the API and we get back a joke. Um, and therefore we see actually uh, those are basically the most basic scenarios um, you can do with, within bots. But there you also see uh, you don't need to actually be a developer to, to start building a bot. Of course, if, if there are some, uh, let's say, really complex dialogues and, and stuff like that and you're you're dealing with, let's say, conditions or loops. Uh, you have to have that development knowledge, of course, um, but you don't need to have the knowledge of writing actual code. You don't need to be a C-sharp or JavaScript developer anymore to build a bot. If you know the basics and the principles, you can go ahead with Composer and just um, start building your bot right within there. That's it. Time's up Excellent. As well. Excellent. Really cool stuff, Stefan, as an introduction on this. And, and then we could definitely potentially schedule a new one for the later in order to go slightly more detailed on settings. But this is a great intro sure. on getting sure. started. And there was a lot of people kind of, a, oh, well, they were not aware of the whole thing exists. Uh, so really, really cool stuff. Absolutely. Thanks. So it's always the thing. We're shipping so many things across the Microsoft nowadays in Azure on M365 side. So it's really hard to stay up to date on what's happening. Thank you.